Hey everyone, this is James. Uh, I just wanted to take a few minutes and just kind of uh, give you guys a like a way to kind of quick start. So just kind of a way to show you what to do when you first get installed the software and how to get you up and going and maybe kind of like the general idea behind um, scene layering, scene stacking. So I am just going to patch in some uh, inner pocket spots, four of them. I like 11 channel because I like my 16 bit pan and tilt positioning. And then pick some uh, 12 bit hex, say eight channels, patch in four of these. Um, in case anybody's wondering, you can just select a fixture, put it in the relevant universe, uh, put them in, you know, it tells you the first DMX channel, which would be 77, since that's my next one open. How many fixtures, number of fixtures, and the index number. You really don't have to worry about the index number too much, it's just for, like obviously I've got eight fixtures here, so my index number will be fixture number nine for the next fixture I patch in. Um, you can see, you know, in a pocket spot, point one, in a pocket spot, point two, you know, point three, point four, and so on and so forth. Um, the fixture number, the, the, the index number, is like a fixture ID number. It isn't always going to be the same. Um, it kind of can be switched up. Uh, as an example of that, just go into the edit tab, pop this back over. I mean, I know that, you know, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, this is 5, 6, 7, 8, but since I have these selected, now that's it's 1, 2, 3, 4. So if I uh, do this, I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This obviously is not the uh, Fisher ID that they were patched with. So I, I basically just created a different ID set. That's what, the, that's what I'm just saying. It's the ID number you don't have to worry about because it's going to always be, it's a fluid number. It's going to be changing depending on which fixtures are selected and when. Um, it's mainly for the effects engine to know um, which ID number to send the effect to and in what order. Um, don't don't pay a whole lot of attention to the ID number or index number. So just select your fixtures in the order that you want them to play back in. Um, okay, so edit tab, uh, as you see by default, you get group one and a scene. Uh, since I've got two sets of fixtures here, one way I could start programming is I do group one for just double click here. I'll we'll call them you know, pockets. And then I can just click over here for another group. Double click and we'll call it uh, hex LEDs. And so between these two groups, I can start programming different scenes. And for just the fixtures in each group, um, it just by naming them doesn't mean I can only program hex LEDs. But it's a, it's a good method to stick to that. So if I make an inner pocket group, I program just inner pockets in this group. So that way when I go to the live tab, the live section, and start playing the back, start stacking, I don't get things that are going to overlap and you know knock each other out as I'm stacking my stuff. I just, I just stack inner pockets on top of hex to make one cohesive look. Um, you don't have to program this way. You can program, you can make other groups of, say, just colors or different color combinations. You, know, you can make another group for just, uh, just the positions of the, the inner pockets while a different group handles the colors and dimmer effects and stuff like that. Uh, this is just one way of many options that you can start to program your show. So I'm just kind of doing this just to kind of be to be basic up front 
and um, just to give you a quick idea of one thing you can do. Um, right now I'm in the general tab, so I just go to in a pocket spot that's because that's the group I'm in. So I want to select those fixtures. I can turn them on and center the pan and tilt to zero or to center 127. So I can just uh, you know they're gonna be all out you know, or I can um, you know, click one, move it over, click two over you know, and stuff like that so it's just kind of uh, I'm just gonna knock out some quick looks real quick so there's not gonna be anything special just different different looks so that one's orange and then turn this back on turn it to center uh, say I want to fan them out a little bit fan them out from the left that's the fan option right there you know, um, so I kind of do that, and you know, I can even kind of fan through the colors if I wanted to. So I could fan from, uh, let's say, yellow to orange to it's a blue. So I'm not sure that didn't work. So. Anyways, just have to check that out. Um, pick a different, different gobo. Maybe just select here and do a different gobo for the middle. Maybe a different color. Yeah, blue and yellow. Uh, let's go here and make another scene. Or better yet. I want to keep what I had here and just kind of duplicate it and maybe I just wanted to change up the pan and tilt positioning I can do relative view so it keeps it how it was and then just kind of move them around a little bit so change their position up just a little bit but keeps them where they were and then maybe I want to go from all green to let's say cyan like that and then we'll switch up the gobos again. Uh, I love that tunnel gobo, you know. Okay, so uh, now I've got three different looks for my anal pocket spots. So now I'll start programming some hex LEDs. Uh, see, my first scene over here was what orange. Maybe I want this to match. So I'll select my wait, no, oop, wrong tab. Get the Go to this tab, pop open the dimmer, turn on the amber, maybe add some more red and green to it a little bit to kind of make it pop more. Up to you. Mix your own color as you like. So now I got my orange. Let's see what was this one. Uh, blue and yellow. Go back here. Select all of them. Turn on the dimmer. Make them all blue. Maybe add some UV to it a little bit. Up to you. Make another one. Green and cyan. So let's kind of stick with this. Like a turquoise kind of color. So now we got we got three scenes for each group. Um, you know, if we want them to fade in nicely, just turn on the fade time here. Or I can even select the entire group. Turn on fade. This is red because it's seen that I have a fade time of one selected in one of these, but not all. Of them. So it's just kind of highlighting to me, hey, this red here means this is different. This isn't. This isn't everywhere yet. This is one of these has one in it somewhere, so I just change it to one for all of them. You can do that just by selecting the group. They'll all do that. So same with the inner pockets. Let's uh, put on the fade time a little bit. So yeah, let's go live. Start playing the scene. 
we were just stacked. Let's see what's going on. Got this here. So you can just kind of uh, uh and I got uh three sets of different looks to do to play back at any time. Well I want you know you know, want orange and cyan to play or maybe cyan and green and then pop on pop this back to purplish blue, whatever. Stuff like that. That's just a quick way of getting going. On uh Mighty Mix 3.0. You know, you can, uh, at any time, you can just play, click this little arrow here, get a nice dimmer of all the fixtures that are programmed into that scene. So, just the hex LEDs. And if you had a sequence in here, you'd be able to adjust the speed. You'd also be able to even pause it live on the fly. So yeah, that's just a real quick, easy way to start programming on Mighty Mix 3. You can go back in and we'll certainly create more, more scenes. Create another group even. You can even, uh, Make another group here. We'll call this one Master. And uh, what I'm gonna want this one to do is to block out everything. So I'm just gonna change the release mode to general and turn the loop to just one. Uh hot time will be like nothing really. So four seconds. That will black everything up. Or, um, so well, you see, let's just click two things here. Let's just gonna kick everything off because it's release mode is set to general, so general is gonna override everything else. So just click here, boom, black out. I uh, can even just rename it. Back out. Or I could take another scene in this master group. Still empty, nothing in it. Uh, uncheck always loop. Put the whole time to nothing. But I get this jump to button. That's that's active now. So what I could do is uh, say I want the scene and that scene to play together. Uh, I'll take another scene. I've always loop, change the whole time to nothing. Jump to, uh, let's see, that scene and that scene. And so now I go to play back. Uh, so I got th those two playing, but I go on pop, I want to do something different. You know. So yeah, it's a way to trigger multiple things at once. Pretty handy. Or you know, you guys can uh, kind of get things going in a, a nice cycle by do always loop and let everything go for like five loops, so about five seconds. Pretty short, but yeah, just gonna give you an idea. Um. So jump to next scene. Uh, for same for this. Jump to the next scene. Uh, so let's see what happens when we do this. Click scene one, triggers these two, five loops, and boom, they're gonna jump all on their own. It's kinda like creating auto cycles. See what happens once I get to the end. And they're just gonna keep playing like that. 
uh, all night, just kind of randomly. Let's back them up. We can just click play. We'll just kind of start going through it. So again, just just options for playback. So just uh, a lot of stuff you can do. This is just very basic beginning. Um, I'm just gonna wrap this up now before it gets really complicated and confusing for some people. Uh, so this is just a uh, starter guide for getting up and running with the uh, you know two sets of lights and just a, a couple of scenes. So I hope you enjoyed this and you learned something. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave me a comment in the comments of this video or email us at support, uh, support at AmericanDJ.com. Thanks. Bye.